Hello, in the following video we will see the newly announced announcement bar extensions for the thank you page and customer account pages. These extensions are placed at the very top of the page thanks to a newly added extension target. And as indicated over here, with this feature you can create extensions that highlight a merchant's most important task on the page, such as service, reviews and upsells, although nothing is stopping you from just using this to surface relevant information without any real call to action for the customer. They are available starting on the July 2025 or 07 2025 version of the Checkout and Customer Accounts UA Extensions APIs. And now let's see how this looks like. So by clicking on this link over here, it will open this tab. And here we have all the UX for the announcement bar. You can see over here how this looks like. So it appears at the very top of the page. This is the mobile view, but on desktop you will get a very similar experience. Collapse, it will look like this. And if you have more than two lines of content, then they will be automatically trimmed to look like this. And the expanded state is like this. So here Shopify has added this video demonstration. So if you have more content than these two lines, then the customer is able to click on them to expand all of this. And here you have some guidelines of when Shopify recommends that you use this. Once again, for content that needs to capture the buyer's immediate attention. If content is not intended to be attention grabbing, then it should be placed in line using other available extension targets on the page. And these are available in the thank you page, which is the page available after you complete a purchase, or in the customer account pages, which includes order index, order status, and profile pages. This means that right now it is not available in the checkout page. And here we have some example use cases, such as post checkout upsells, referral programs, exclusive offers and promotions buyer survey and feedback, and more. You can take a closer look at this if you want. I will leave this link in the video description. And next we have the design guidelines. You should pay close attention to this because these are important restrictions placed in these extensions. The collapse state has a height restriction that shows only about two and a half lines of text on mobile. It doesn't mention in desktop here, but on desktop this seems to be the case as well. And then the expanded state height restriction is about two thirds of the mobile height and one third of the desktop height. And as you can see in this warning here, any content that exceeds the expanded state's maximum height will be cut off with no option to scroll to view the truncated portion. Meaning that if your content exceeds what is explained over here, then it will be entirely cut off and the customer will not be able to access it. So you should plan ahead and make sure your content doesn't go beyond these limitations to make sure the user gets the best user experience they can. If you want to show long form content, you can use a model within this extension. We will see how to do that later in the video. And here we can see content that is too long and that is being truncated. Another thing to be aware of is that this extension target is not to be confused with this banner component. Banner over here, once again, is a component, so you can place it anywhere. But this over here is an extension target, meaning that it will always appear at the top of the page. And as you can see, the UI for this looks very different to what we have over here. And now that we've seen all of this, let's build one of these extensions to get a better understanding of how they work. And now from VS Code, I'm going to run npm in it. Shopify app latest to create a new Shopify app. In this case, this would be an extension only app, and I am going to name this. Let's first add this defined dashboard. I will create this as a new app. Let's name it Checkout. No, announcement bar extension two, because I have created one for testing before. And over here, let's take all of these files from here once this finishes initializing the project. And let's move them out of, the, out of the folder. You can also CD into that folder if you want, but I will do it this way. And now let's run npm on Shopify app generate extension. And it says that the next gen platform is coming soon, but for now, let's just stay in this one and let's find checkout UI. And let's name this announcement by function. 
I will select TypeScript with React, but you can select any piece of options if you want. And let's wait for the extension to generate any standard dependencies. With the app created, we can see here that the API version is 2025.07 as specified in the docs a moment ago, so we are good to use this extension. And now let's go over here to the extensions folder and in SRC, we have to update the target over here. Let's see if the autocomplete works for this. So purchase. Thank you. And announcement render. So this is going to be the target for this extension to show over there. And we have to also update this in Shopify.extension.toml. So let's save this. And now let's run this by running npm run dev. And then for selecting your store, I'm going to look for announcement bar extension, which is the store that I have created for this project. And now let's press P to preview this extension. Let's install the app first. And then I can click on this. And it will take me to checkout. I need to complete this checkout. So let's do test email become. Let's see if it has best person name or last name. Let's do something in like California University. For sure, if I do I duplicate this. Right here. And then over here, as you a test card. And let's complete this folder and I feel for the state. Fornia. And perhaps I need to use a one then. And there we go. That's because there are the type of test credit cards for Shopify. And that was the other one. So right now we are not seeing anything in this an album by extension. Let's try to have a fun like that is. We might be using some components that should not be used here. So actually let's delete all this boilerplate code. And let us return a text that says hello world. Let's save. We're gonna sing there we are. Here we have our extension. It seems like the default boilerplate that you get when you create an extension has something that doesn't allow it to render over here, but now I was able to end it this year and have a hello world. Let's start now by adding a block stack. And let's add this a couple of times so you can see how this gets changed. So if I add four lines over here, you're going to see that I only see two of them. And now if I click on this, it expands and I can see the four of them. But if I add a bunch of these, so let's say that I copy this over and over again and to the last one, I have a word last, you're going to see that I'm not going to be able to see that last one, even if this is expanded because of the limitation we saw on the body. Which to refresh is that on desktop, we can only take one third of the height of the screen. So this is why this is getting trained. And this is just the most basic example using the announcement bar for displaying some text. But now let's say that we wanted to build something more dynamic. So let's add a text field over here once again, and let's do, thank you for your purchase. Let us know how we did. And now let's add a form over here. So let's look for the components that we need. For adding a form, we are going to add a simple text field and we are going to wrap this in a form component. So let's do form. We have to import this from the correct library, which is this one over here. And we need to use a text field. So let's add text field and also import it from here. Let's see what properties are we missing. We need an unsubmit handler. So unsubmit, 
let's just do an empty function for now. And for the field, we need a label. So let's do name. That's uh, maybe a last name. Even though we already have this information at this point, but this is just an example. And let's see if we have a text area component. Doesn't look like we do. So we are going to need to use text field. And there is likely a property for the number of rows. We're going to see that. So for text field, we have the multi line property, which looks to be the one that we need. So multi line, let's give it six lines and let's give it a label of comments. And we can also write this in a block stack and give this a spacing of let's give it base let's save and let's see what we have over here now so this didn't seem to be saving or updating from here if we refresh this page we'll have to paste the other again but that's okay let's do that i will do that off camera and i will come back when i'm in this page again and here I am in checkout, and this is my extension showing once again. So if I click on this, I can see this form, and I can start filling this. Maybe I should be adding also a button for submitting the form. So submit, it means like I add a button from the web audio. So let's see, button. And then from here, let's do submit. Let's see if this gets refreshed. Doesn't seem like it did, and it is actually being cut off. So we are here getting hit with a problem. Let's reduce this to have true lines just to see if it fits now. And it is doing better. Although we see that this button has a blue background and this announcement bar has a blue background. They are both fading from the same place. Let's see if we can change this for us background. Appearance. Let's see if monochrome does anything. And there we go. Now we have a white background with blue test. And I can try filling this form over here. So test name, test last name. And you can see that it is working. And if I actually had a submit handler, I will be able to submit it. However, this is not an ideal experience. Instead, this should go in a mode. So let's see how to put it in there. So from the code, we're going to replace this with an inline stack. Once again, importing it from the right library. And over here, we are going to cut this text from here and instead put it in a link. We have to also update this to be an inline stack. And now this link will have an overlay. And this overlay should be a model. Once again, make sure you are importing everything from this library over here. And inside this model, we are going to drop the form. So I'm going to cut it from here and put it here. And now if I go here, looks like I will have to come to this page again because it didn't update. So let's do that. And here I have my updated extension. So you can see here that now I have, thank you for your purchase. And I have this link over here. If I click on this, you're going to see that I get this model with the form. And now the form is complete over here. I will probably need to add some padding to make this look a bit better. So let's see how I can do that. And the title, let's say something like, tell us about your experience. And over here, if I click it, we can see that we have a much better looking model. And now that we've seen all of this, where do you find more information about this target if you needed to? So in the targets overview page, make sure you are at least in 2025.07 or anything upper than that. And over here, let's click on review all thank you page extensions. And you are going to be able to see over here that for announcement we have purchased a thank you that announcement that render. And if we click on this, we are going to see the documentation for this extension target. You can see here that it has access to the announcement API, which is specific to this target. 
to the order confirmation API, and then to the standard API. Let's expand on the, on the announcement API to see what we have available. And over here, we can see that we have an add event listener. For listening to the close event, we can programmatically close it, or we can remove this event listener if we want it. Let's see how to programmatically close it. So for this, we're going to destructure this use API return object, and we are going to get announcement. We have to actually specify over here the target to be able to get what we need. So let's put this here, and then let's get announcement. And for the model, let's do that on close. We are going to do announcement the close. So when the model is closed, we are going to be closing the announcement bar as well. So let's go over here. Let's say that we are filling this. Name, last name, comment, that I click submit, that something happened, and that I close this model. If I close it now, you can see that also the announcement bar got closed right away. Also, in case you're wondering if you can change the background color of the announcement bar, then the answer is yes. However, you can only change it by changing the color of other elements in the page. Let's see what I mean. So from the settings of your store, by clicking on checkout, we go to customize over here. And the background color that it is taking is this accent color here. So if you wanted to change the background color of the banner, you will have to change the accent color altogether. Let's say that I wanted the accent color to be this yellow over here, something like this. And if I save this, you can see that a lot of other elements got changed to be that yellow as well. And now if I go to the thank you page, you can see that the announcement bar now has a yellow background and the text got updated to be black to have enough contrast with it. This is not ideal because sometimes you might want to independently update the background color of the announcement bar without changing the color of other elements in your checkout, but this is what we have for now. And finally, for the customer account pages, the idea is exactly the same. You will select a target from the ones available here. In this case, you will look for announcement, and you can see that there is one for the order index page, for the order status page, and over here for the profile page. You can see that it is roughly the same as what we saw, but with the appropriate wording. So in this case, customer account dot profile dot announcement dot render. And by clicking on any of these, you are going to see the available APIs and an example of how to render this, which is very similar to what we have seen in this video. And I will leave this link in the video description as well, so you can take a look at that if you need to. And that's it for this video. So after getting here and seeing what these extensions have to offer, do you find this useful? Are they missing some feature you'd like to see added in the future? Let me know in the comments down below. And with that, if you found this video helpful, remember to like and subscribe for more Shopify-related content, and I will see you all in the next one.